This is the Überleben Stoker wood stove. And this is the Überleben Stoker wood stove. What's the difference? If you're interested in finding out, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Überleben for sending out the new version of the Stoker wood stove. And basically, that is what the difference is between the two. This is a new, upgraded, redesigned version of the Stoker wood stove. The question is, yes, it's been redesigned, but it has it actually been upgraded. Well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. So what I'll do is I'll take you down to the tabletop. We'll compare the old version with the new version, talk about the differences and the reasons for those changes. But more importantly, we'll get them outdoors. We'll build fires in each of them and see what a difference it actually makes. All right. So here is the new Überleben or new version of the Überleben Stoker wood stove already assembled. In a second, I'm going to take it apart and reassemble it for you. The process is essentially the same as it is with the original stove, but there's just a slight difference that I want to point out in my experience in when I first got it and even assembling it now. Now, there is not a lot to show you in terms of what came with it because what it came with is a nice waxed canvas stuff sack, which is, you know, good quality. There's no question about it. And I like the fact that they're using natural materials there and it does give it a bit of a bushcraft vibe. The other thing that this stove has is this, and this is the, I'm going to get this wrong, the Cochin X Grill Grate. It's made of 304 stainless steel. It's heavy, heavy grade. In fact, you can see uh, it's, I've been used it a fair amount and it has not shown any signs of warping whatsoever. I'll explain the reason for this being included in a minute, but before before I even take this apart and reassemble it, let me just bring in the older version of the stove so that we can do some side-by-sides. Now, uh, it also did come with a wax canvas case as well. Not as heavily waxed. I think that's one of the improvements is the, the new version is seems to be a little bit more heavily waxed in the canvas. All right, so here are the two stoves side by side. They do share some common traits. I mean, basically, they're the same shape. Generally, you can see the differences in their side by side. Um, but that's about it. They go together pretty much the same with a slight variation. Other than that, though, there are some really significant differences. Oh, I suppose that's similar, right? The round feed port. And that is, almost, you can also see that the, even that is different, where the original had a lower feed port, the newer has a higher position feed port. I'll explain all of that in a minute. Now, here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to give you all the dimensions of each of them so that you can do size and weights and all that type of thing. I'll put all of that in the video description. We'll save a little bit of time by doing that because I know it's really the only people that are interested are ones that want to look at them side by side and just talk about weights and sizes, which is important to some people, but not everybody. All right, let's just take this. Or, well, quickly, what I'll explain is here's the basic differences in dimensions and size and weights. This is bigger, this is smaller, this is lighter, this is heavier, smaller, heavier. And there's a reason for that. Now, let's just get the old one out of the way. What I'm going to do is very quickly take it apart and put it back together. I'll do the taken apart portion off camera, but I'll put it back together so I can show you just the little idiosyncrasy that it has. All right, I put the stove back in its case just to show you what it looks like. I, you know, I will give you the overall weight. One pound, four ounces, as opposed to 14.2 ounces for the old one. You know, I can really feel it when I have the two of them side by side. And these are both made of stainless steel. And Überleben did produce an older version uh, of the Stoker in titanium for a while. But so far, they have not mentioned doing the same for the new version. And there may be a reason for that if I can. Uh, well, OK, I'll give you what I think is the reason for that in a moment. Let's put it back together. So take everything out. Now, I've used this stove a lot and I've cleaned it, but I still get dirty off of it every time. I'm going to put the grill aside for a moment. We have the four uh, side plates. Three of them are identical. The fourth one being the one with the feed port is the only one that's slightly different. And uh, here's the first thing I'm going to say about when I got this and I put it together, the plates were perfectly flat. Now, you can see they have a curvature to them. Uh, that's I suppose you might say warping. It's not warping because it's more of a set. That's the thing. It's actually taking its final shape in the first burn. And it actually played into my assembly of it the first time. So when you get this for the very first time and you're going to put it together, you might struggle with it a tiny bit until after that first burn. And then it has that curvature set. But as you can see, they're all 
perfectly in the same shape. They fit together. That's three plates right there. And um, they're heavy too. They are heavier. So heavier stainless steel all the way around. And that is both good and it has one slight downside. Now, I'm going to put this together the way you normally would. And okay, so I've got my four plates. Let's show the floor plate right now because this is probably one of the most significant differences in the design between these two stoves. And I'll bring the old one back in so you can see what I'm talking about. But the floor plate is really heavy by comparison to the old one, much, much heavier. And that's very much intentional. And it is done to reduce warping or any deformation of the plate itself. The other thing you'll notice is the holes are tiny. And there's not a lot of them. There is, what, 20 holes, I think, in this, or 25 holes, Mark, that you can count properly. So they're small, tiny holes. That's done for the reason to restrict airflow. The idea here is restricting airflow, airflow over the older version. Does that actually create a benefit? Well, well, we'll see in a few minutes' time. All right, to put this in, start just like the song that has the tabs on three sides, one side without the tabs. That's going to face the front where the feed port is. So I drop the tabs into the slots on the side plates. And then it's the, just the last plate here where you just do a little bit of twisting to line up the notches on the sides of it and you're together. That's it. Now, here's the first thing I'm going to say about assembly. I did, well, actually, I guess it's the second thing I'm going to say about assembly. I did say that it was harder to put together the first time than it is now because the plates have all taken a little bit of a set. The set is created by that bottom plate. It has a slight curvature to the sides, just slight, not very much, but there is a bit of a curve on each side. As a result, when the um, I built my first fire in this and the stove got good and hot, they form themselves to the bottom plate a little bit better and now it makes it easier to put together. Having said that, it's still harder to put together that last thing where you flex the plates and bring the tabs that lock together into place. It's a little bit harder to put together than it is with the old version and that is because of the heavier weight stainless steel. I only tell you that because those of you who have an old version of this uh, will and want to get the new version you're saying what's the difference? Why is it harder? It's just the thicker stainless steel. It just takes a little bit and I mean it's a tiny bit more effort to put it together. No big deal at all really. Okay so there it is assembled. Now Here's what this grill is all about. It is intended for doing two things, and I'll be demonstrating this when I get it outside. And first off, you can see how there's extensions on the corners. They actually just drop down on top of the stove itself, kind of not locking it, but keeping it in place so it's not going to fall apart. That's your pot support. That's your pot support for small pots, pots smaller than the width of the stove itself. Great idea because it also doubles as a grill, a grill that you can actually grill on. You can cook meat or whatever else you want to cook on top of that. And with the read slowed down burn, you should be able to, and I say should because we'll get it outside and we'll demonstrate, you should be able to create a longer lasting coals from your wood which are better for grilling with. So it let's I, I guess the, the design intent here is to create a stove that is better for cooking with than just boiling water. So, uh, well, let's bring the other one back in and we'll just quickly talk about that in design intent. Here's one of the things I'm gonna say about the old version of the stove. It worked well, it worked really well. And I have a video where I compared the Stoker, the original Stoker against my Ember Lip, in my Ember Lit stove in stainless steel side by side. And I'll link that video at the end of this one if you're interested in seeing how that comparison worked. The big difference between the Emberlit and the old version of the Stoker is, well, okay, there's a small difference. This one is tiny bit, like maybe a tenth of an inch or an, or an eighth of an inch uh, larger in all dimensions. But the big difference was this, the bottom. The floor plate, the fire grate, whatever you want to call it, is wide open on the stoker and on the emberlet it's a solid piece of metal and that made a huge difference in performance for the two stoves and uh, this stove well the end result is this stove with the same amount of wood lit at the same time as the emberlet this created a much hotter fire faster than the emberlet 
but then of course it also went through its wood faster and then the fire died down while there was still burning embers, burning wood, not just embers, but burning wood in the emberlet. So this is a much faster, hotter burning stove than the emberlet. That has some advantages. It, it does. It also has some disadvantages. The advantage is you have a much better chance of getting your fire going in cold weather or if your wood is slightly damp and it's not ideal, you'll get a hotter fire going, but you're going to go through your wood much faster. Of course, the other thing is, and not that the other stove doesn't have this issue, but this has a greater chance of it. And that is coals falling through. So you really have to be careful about what your surface is that you're putting this on to make sure your hot it's not going to be affected by the hot coals. Now, the emberlet's still going to have that issue because a lot of heat transfers down through that solid plate. You really stood, still should have it on a fire safe surface. Now, here's what I want to do. Oh, and by the way, the original had the crossbars that's tucked right into the stove itself, and that was there for the small pots. And Emberlet did exactly the same thing. They had that same crossbar. Um, all right, I'm showing you the bottom of this. I also want to show you the sides so you can see what airflow is all about. You can see that's what they have on the sides, just above the plates, same all the way around. But that wide open fire grate, and of course the feed hole. I'll talk to the feed hole in a minute. I'm going to take the grate off of the new version just for a second because I, I'll know I'll drop it otherwise. Now, let's compare the bottoms. Look how restricted, by comparison, the airflow is in the new version of the Stoker compared with the old version. The concept is, is this should slow the burn down dramatically and create a much better cooking stove. Well, does it? We're going to see in a few minutes time. Same thing goes for the side of the stove. Just a few holes, well, okay, there's 12 holes. They're on the side that uh, will also give you airflow. There is a, another benefit of that I'll talk in a minute, but that's the same in all three sides. You just get that smaller, fewer, smaller holes. So the concept here is that it's going to restrict airflow to the degree that you'll have a slower, more controlled fire which is better for cooking with. One other feature that has changed just a little bit is the height differential between the feed ports. And I know most stoves have a lowered feed port. The idea is you can feed sticks in and, uh, okay. There is essentially a big difference between stove designs that, that I've come across with their feed ports. One is the low feed port, which allows you to stick sticks in and have them just rest above the flame so that they can catch and you can feed longer sticks in it as you need to. The other theory is raise the feed port up and drop sticks in at a downward angle and the flame will cl climb the sticks as it, the, they are consumed. Um, Pros and cons of both of them. I actually kind of like the higher feed port in most cases. And in this one, it is actually also a benefit. It does help to keep the sticks inside further into the stove and less likely to follow. So I do see that as an improvement as well. I, I don't know why they needed to do this recessed portion here. I don't know if functionally it does anything, but it looks cool, right? Okay, so that's the design differences between the two stoves. Oh, there is one more thing I should point out. And this is actually very key to the design. I mentioned that the base plate or the fire grate is heavier than the, or not just heavier, more, well, it is heavier, heavier with fewer holes that are smaller in diameter. The other thing is it has a coating on it that is like a fireproof ceramic. I don't, I, yeah, that is showing up. You can see how shiny it is. A fireproof ceramic. I honestly expected that to dry and chip from the hot heat and it hasn't. Uberlieben actually has a version of this stove where all the plates have that coating on it and it, it looks really cool. I mean, it, it does look cool. Um, I don't know that it adds anything functionally, maybe rust protection, I can see that being a benefit, but functionally I don't know that it does anything, but it does keep the stove looking cleaner longer. Other than that, yeah, I think looking cool is part of what that's all about on the bottom. Okay, now, I think I'm going to leave the comments for functionality in terms of how do they compare when they're burning for when we get outside and build fires in it. But I do want to show you one more thing about the uh, new version of the of the Stoker that the old one struggled with, and that is using it with an alcohol stove, a Trangia in this case. So here's what I've discovered, and I'm actually very pleased to see this. The holes on the side allow me to take 
Well, in this case, I used a couple of skewers that I just cut down to size, and they could be a tiny bit shorter, but they're okay. I'm gonna come in through the sides and show you. There are, right, four levels. I find that the second from the bottom is the best level for doing this. Put both of them in. And did I put it in the right level? Yes. No, I put it in the wrong level. Okay, so there are the skewers sitting inside and they actually create a near perfect pot gap to the top of the stove. Let's see if I can tip this and show you. All right, near perfect pot gap. I say near perfect because of course that's, that's subjective. I find that this is just over an inch, inch and a quarter to the top of the plates and that gives me a really efficient use of the trangia. However, when you drop the Cochin, Cochin X grill in, it actually drops it down by well, just over a quarter of an inch. So you're closer to that one inch supposed sweet spot. Either way, I mean, and you, yes, you can play with it. You can raise it or lower it. And if you're using different types of alcohol stoves other than the Trangia, that gives you some options to raise or lower the skewers or whatever you're using to support the uh, alcohol stove. That's a huge thing because that's one of the things that you could not do, at least not do easily without drilling holes on the side with the original. So thank you, Uberlieber, for thinking of that. I'm going to give you the credit for that. If it wasn't, we'll just say it's your, your idea, right? Okay. Uh, what else can I say about this? Nothing more to say about it. Let's get it outside and do some demonstrations. Then I'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts on using this. Okay, I'm set up in my backyard in my testing station. What you can't see all around me is uh, a lot of snow. So I am working, I've cleared off this area right here. I've got the two stoves set up on some fire bricks. I have an equal amount of wood set out for them. It just happens to be pin cherry that's dried and split. And uh, yeah, so I'm ready to get this test started. I did put the crossbars, or left the crossbars in the Uberlieb in the old version because it's just so hard to put on once you get the fire going. Uh, so let's not waste any more time because it is a bit cool out here. I'm using wood wool to get the fire going just to expedite things. If I can get it lit, maybe I'll do it this way. How about that? Put it down inside first and then get it lit. That was a bit smarter. And I can do the same thing on this side. Give that a couple of seconds, then I'll start dropping in my pieces of wood. Really no special way to do this. I'm just going to be a little bit random, piece from each at a time. Start building the fire up. It's not a science experiment so much as it is. Well, you'll see. But, uh, that's right. A little easier, I think, if I feed these ones in that way. So once I get the wood loaded, I'm not even sure I'm going to get it all in at once, we'll watch for a few seconds to see how quickly the stove takes off. I may not even get all this wood in there. Uh, then we'll cut away for a few moments just to give it a chance to really establish. And ultimately what we're going to do is to see how long the burns last. Now I won't be watching this straight through, obviously I will be doing so a little bit at a time. In other words, I'll just show you segments along the way. I'm actually not able to get all the wood in each of the stoves. Four pieces for the new version left over and you can see how full it is to the top. Three pieces for the old version, which has a bit of more room in top, but I think I'll just leave that for a second. And uh, all right, I think 
just so this video doesn't get too long is I'll just speed it up. So we'll just let it go. I'll run it in faster time and then we'll come back. All right, back to real time. So, observations so far. Uh, obviously, as expected, the older version of the Uberlieben is catching on with much more intensity, much more ferocity, and uh, well, it's too early to tell how fast it's going to go through its wood. But you can see the new version is taking off. It's just taking off slower. Uh, ultimately, I want to get all the wood in these stoves to. Kind of prove the point that uh, you know equals amount of wood to stove to stove. One thing, of course, is the older version has a larger larger burn chamber, so I can get more wood in there. The smaller one is going to well, it's almost full now. I don't think I'll put too much in. I will do so in a minute, though. Uh, going to give it another minute, and then we're going to try the pots to see how the pots do on this. In fact. You can see the wind has picked up dramatically here in my backyard. One of those things that sometimes you just can't account for. Hopefully it's not too windy on the microphone. I think we're at a point now where both of them are well established. We can do the pot test to see how well they respond. I'm going to put the pot rest on top of the new version. And we'll start with the small pots on first. So the pot I'm using for this test is my Tom Shoe Titanium 750 milliliter pot. First I'm going to put it on the old version of the stove. And that's precisely what I expected. Nothing. You know, no, no dampening at all. No smoking of the stove. There's lots and lots of airflow. I think my test might be skewed a little bit by the wind. Let's see how it goes on to the newest version of the stove. So, as expected, it is creating a certain amount of smoke because I did cut off airflow to a large degree by that small pot. I think I will turn the pot stand or the fire grate, the caution, 90 degrees to see how much that helps out. Not something you do with your bare hands, is it? Even that helped. That helped a lot right there. Just doing that. Just lifting the pot up a little bit higher by turning the grate that 90 degrees made a huge difference for the smaller pot. All right, let me take the small pot off. I'm going to take the caution off altogether or the fire grate off altogether here. I think I can probably get in some more firewood in each of these stoves. Get in the remainder of the firewood, I guess. Again, just to... Maybe I can. Oh. You can see the smaller stove still won't accept all of the wood. But it's close. Now, it's not showing here. I, I will show this in a minute. It's not showing up yet, but the older stove is going through its wood faster. It now has its complete load of wood in there and I can see it from my angle. You'll see it in a few minutes when I change just what a difference it makes. All right, so now I have another pot to put on. This one is larger in diameter. It's the Uberlieben, Uberlieben Kessel, my titanium pot. And I'm going to start by putting it on the older stove. And I actually am quite impressed. It didn't cause as much smoke as I thought it would. The fire is burning nice and hot. So it uh, less smoke. Some smoke, more than it was with the little pot, but not too bad at all. Let's move it over and put it on top of the new stove. 
That, on the other hand, created a lot of smoke. Now, a lot of smoke is relative. I mean, it is smoke. It's smoking more than I like to, and unnecessarily so. Uh, I just, you know, a smoky stove is just one that's not all that as efficient as it could be. And that's what I'm seeing is quite a bit of smoke here on the new version of the Uberleben with the larger pot. Now, in a second, I'm going to put on the, a pair of cross stands. And we'll see by raising the height if it makes a difference. I don't know if I can do this without gloves or not. Yeah, I should be able to. There we go, that went on easy enough. So you can see it's burning well now. Let's put the pot on. See, that made all the difference right there. That made all the difference, just having that little bit of height, approximately half, not quite three quarters of an inch, higher clearance over the stove. And there's little to no smoke. No smoke coming as a result of the popping on it. There is some smoke just because of the airflow in from the stove, but... Yep, okay, now, last thing to do is to wait it out for it to consume all of its wood or to see which one goes out first. I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put the last two pieces into the new version of the stove. I think possibly I'll take that pot rest off first. Then put the last two pieces in so they will both have had exactly the same amount of wood. And we'll see how that goes. All right, I'll bring you back in a few minutes as soon as I see one of the two stoves burning down to nothing but coals, and we'll see who is going to last the longest. All right, as the older version of the Uber Lieben dies out just down to coals, I actually don't see any active flame in there at all, and still a lot of wood, a lot of flame. Actually, it looks like it hasn't even halfway gone through its fuel. The new Uber Lieben version just taking its time, just the way it's designed to do, just taking its time. Nice, slow, controlled burn. Still a little hot for grilling over, but much slower fuel consumption. So as we watch this, I just want to mention two more things that I did not mention before we came outdoors, and that was tests with alternative fuels. I did mention alcohol, and that the new version is much more accommodating for use with alcohol stoves. But uh, I also did try wood pellets in the new version, something you can't do in the old version because the holes are just too big on the bottom. And my experience with wood pellets so far has not been good in the new version of the stove. And uh, I've got more testing to do, so I don't want to be definitive on this, but what I'm saying is basically they didn't, they didn't stay lit. Not Well, they, they would go to smoke very quickly. And that's usually because there's not enough airflow underneath the wood pellets. So they're more heavily affected by a downdraft, which oftentimes snuffs them out. So at this point, I cannot recommend wood pellets for use in the new Uber Lieben. I'll, I'll test it some more, and if, it's, if I can figure out a way to make it work better, then maybe uh, I'll come back and do that. The one thing I have not tested with the new stove that I have tested with the old stove is charcoal. I'll do that, and my thinking is, based on my experience, is that the old version of the stove is going to be a much better one to use with charcoal, if that's what you want to do, because of the airflow. Great airflow, taller, giving it more of a chimney effect. The old version of the Uberlimon is going to be much better with charcoal. The new version, well, remains to be seen. I think it'll work but I don't think it will be anywhere near as intense as it would be inside of the old version. So as you can see, we still have a lot of fuel, a lot of wood, a lot of active flame inside of the old version, but we're just about down to grilling coals. That looks amazing, actually. I wonder if I give them a little stir. Find something I can reach in with. I just gave them a little stir. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the stove you want to be cooking over. That one right there, the new version of the Uberleben. The flame is just about to die out, and I'm left with a lot of active coals in there. Good long time. All right, I don't think we need to extend this test any longer. Let's go back inside and wrap this video up. All right, we're back. I've got the stove cleaned up. There's still a little bit of soot on it that I'm getting on my fingers, but that's the nature of wood stoves, right? So. 
As you saw when we got it outside, the new design stove does in fact live up to its claims of slowing the burn down and creating longer lasting coals, which are much better for cooking with, especially if you're going to be doing any grilling. You get some more controlled, longer lasting, even heat with this stove, as opposed to using the original version of the Stoker, which came to flame and fully engulf the wood so much quicker. Great for boiling water. Uh, it has some other benefits uh, we'll talk about in a minute, but not so great for creating coals. Now, it is true you can use some techniques with the older stove if you're trying to create a slower burn and a longer lasting coals. Simple thing like putting foil in the bottom of the stove will actually slow everything down because your airflow gets greatly reduced. Um, yeah, so you can do that with the older stove. Increasing the heat with this stove is not really an option unless you really want to drill out the holes and then you kind of, well, why did you bother buying the stove in the first place? This really is intended to be a better cooking stove. I mean, it still boils water, still comes to heat, it's still plenty hot, but it's just a little lower in intensity than the older version of the stove is. Now, here is the one design, uh, downside of that design or that in design intent for the stove. So. I had this out in the woods for the last month and a half or so using it and uh, it, before the snows that we have now came and then when the snows came as well. And what I found is if my wood, okay, first off, if I didn't have this on a flat surface with good airflow underneath it, then there wasn't as enough air getting to the fire grate for uh, air to come up through. So it was very easy to, I don't want to say snuff it out, but just restrict the airflow significantly. Then it was only relying on airflow from the sides, which will work if there's sufficient airflow from the sides. And here's where things happen. When my wood was very dry, as it was in the test that we just did outside, when my wood was very dry, the stove worked perfectly. It was, it was great, actually. I, I very much enjoyed using it. But there were a few days when I went out looking for wood and I was using primarily uh, branches off of uh, spruce trees and pine trees and snapping them and breaking them up. Some of them were a little damp because of the snow that had been on them, regardless if I tr tried to find the best I could. And the temperatures were cold. The stove struggled. It actually, I had quite a time to get a fire established in the stove. Now, once it got established, it was fairly easy to maintain because you built that critical amount of heat inside and the heavier metal actually, I mean, it's hard to measure, but my theory is the heavier metal of this actually helped to retain the heat inside the stove, meaning that it kept that critical uh, mass of heat in there longer as well as the air holes doing the same thing. So less air was coming in which made a real, not really difficult, but there was more of a struggle keeping this stove lit initially until it really got going. What am I saying is just be aware of that, that you need to use the driest wood possible in this stove in good conditions to get the best performance out of it. Anything less than ideal, you can struggle getting the fire going. So I just put that out there. Now, the other thing you noticed, and I'm not sure why this design exists, but it's not that much different than the original, and that is airflow at the top of the stove. In fact, I think the original Stoker was a little bit better. I mean, the Emberlet su suffers from the same issue, and that is, this is where your exhaust air or exhaust ports, for the lack of a better term, to allow the gases and the smoke and everything else to uh, evacuate or exhaust out of the stove. When you put a, not a small pot, but when you put a large pot on, it can dampen down the uh, airflow to the degree that it smokes a lot. You saw that when we got it outdoors. This stove was a bit better than maybe the Emberlet from that first set of uh, video, uh, that first video review comparing the two together, but it still exists. And there are some fixes. I'm not going to go into them in this video, but if you're interested, you can go to some of my Emberlet videos and you can see the fixes I came up with to make a stove like this one work better. They actually did nothing to improve that exhaust at the top of this stove in their design. It's actually less exhaust room at the top. Now, as I showed outside, one little trick you can do, but this only really works with small pots, is to take the grill from that position, 
lift it and turn it 90 degrees so it sits on top. That raises the small pot up a little bit higher and provides more ventilation in the corners or exhaust room in the corners. It's still not great. And that's the reason why I showed using these, the aluminum crossbars. Less than ideal, but they are what I had as more of a proof of concept than anything else. I just wanted to make sure I had something that fit. When I put those on and then I put the pot back on, greatly improved exhaust uh, air coming out of the stove, less smoking, more heat delivered to the bottom of the pot, and that also does mean less sooting as well. All right, so here's what I'm gonna say, and maybe in recommendation to Uberlieben is, do something to improve airflow at the top. And it can be as simple as just drilling a number of holes or milling a number of holes. A lot, well, you can't do much here because there's not enough room, but at least on the three sides, you can put some holes to create more exhaust air uh, room to come out or maybe include a set of crossbars that you can use as an option. I think that would be a great improvement. Um, there's nothing you can do really, unless you want to do it yourself, to drill out the amount of holes on the bottom. In fact, I don't think I would want to. I would just take into consideration with the experience that I've had, that this stove is better suited for cooking and by cooking, I do mean grilling, than is the older version. However, you can modify the older version to work that way as well. Okay. That's everything I have to say about the new version of the Uberlieben Stoker. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. All the information I have, especially the specifications and the links where you can take another look at this stove, will be in the video description as well. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.